I think here, whereas uh, in North America, for practical purposes, it's uh, the, the United States. If we uh, move one slide, then you can see that uh, in the latter part of the period, a big chunk of the additional output is uh, expected to be uh, cellulosic or second generation fuel ethanol. Quite after a lag phase uh, that, that, that we have put in here to be rather long, it doesn't necessarily ha have to be that long, uh, then there's this uh, exponential growth phase for second generation, both we expect in Latin America uh, and in the United States. These, uh, um, this is a little complicated, uh, this uh, graph. What it shows is the, uh, um, the predicted uh, output of a uh, bagasse. And these numbers are from uh, Unica, uh, the, this curve. Then the blue curve is what, uh, according to Unica, is expected to be left for uh, cellulosic bioethanol production after a, quite an aggressive conver uh, conversion uh, towards uh, bioelectricity, the use of the gas for bioelectricity. Uh, and if you follow the uh, uh, Unica uh, predictions uh, as, as we have them, then you'll follow the blue curve. If you follow the uh, PDE uh, uh, predictions, uh, where it's a, a less aggressive conversion towards uh, bioelectricity, uh, then you get to the green curve. Uh, and uh, the numbers there indicates that uh, the 17.3 billion liters is the amount that can be produced uh, from this curve, the uh, PDE uh, uh, predictions of available uh, uh, biomass for uh, cellulosic. And uh, it's, uh, it's a prediction based on an 80% uh, conversion rate. Uh, right now, uh, uh, CDC and we are very comfortable with 40, uh, but uh, we uh, can uh, obtain 80 in the laboratories. It takes a little too long, so we are working on the timeline there to bring it down. In the U.S., uh, we know we can get to 80 uh, when uh, corn residues are the starting material. So uh, a good uh, amount, uh, potentially, uh, of uh, bioethanol uh, from, um, uh, from cellulosic. Uh, okay. Here. Uh, obviously, uh, this represents uh, many business opportunities uh, here in Brazil, starting with the uh, equipment, uh, of course, many uh, for this to fly, uh, the existing facilities will have to be retrofitted uh, to uh, have uh, a unit also for the conversion of the uh, bagasse. Uh, there's the, uh, the, the much higher uh, uh, land use, better land use. Uh, essentially, uh, it will be possible to get uh, uh, an increase of uh, the fuel ethanol production of around 50% uh, on the same uh, acreage. Then, of course, we talk about uh, the fuel ethanol, the more transport and, and uh, fuel distribution. The, uh, what, what we think would be uh, an obvious opportunity is, uh, is to look at uh, two markets, that two big markets, where we expect that there uh, could uh, be a price differential of, uh, between first and second generation fuel ethanol. In, if we start with uh, Europe first, in Europe, as I mentioned, uh, they, uh, the European law is made so that uh, cellulosic counts double towards meeting the targets. And uh, you would think that uh, this will uh, give a, an opportunity to get a higher price for cellulosic versus that of uh, first generation fuel ethanol. Similarly, in the United States, where uh, the uh, mandate uh, for cellulosic is fixed and must be for cellulosic, but where, uh, as it looks now, in the U.S., uh, uh, it will be impossible to meet the mandate. The mandate starts already next year, 100 million, 
uh, uh, gallons, 400 uh, mi million uh, liters, and in 2013, the mandate is for 1 billion gallons, uh, 4 billion liters, and uh, as it looks, uh, there will not be factories ready to meet the mandate. So maybe this could be an opportunity for uh, Brazilian exports into the United States because that's, uh, as it looks, the only way to fulfill the mandate. So two areas uh, where I, I think uh, uh, you would be favored uh, if, we, if you started uh, exporting cellulosic uh, in addition to the corn-based fuel ethanol. Yeah, this is the, just to give you, uh, we, we work with approximately 50 different uh, companies around the globe. Uh, these are uh, some of the more important ones. Uh, and uh, now, uh, this uh, again is a little complicated uh, slide. This is for, from the US. These uh, are data from our partners. And uh, what it uh, represents is that if you take our partners and they work with the, uh, the enzymes that we launched early this year, then the, the results they get is uh, in this area. The, the best uh, results are the ones where they get both the uh, C5 and the C6 sugars. Uh, and the, the best results is from the companies that are down here. We know from our uh, research with them that uh, next year when we launch the next generation, which we already have in our uh, uh, laboratories and in, in pilot plants, then we'll be meeting the, uh, uh, the, a, a price that will make uh, them in the United States competitive uh, with uh, that of corn-based uh, uh, bioethanol produced in the United States. So next year, uh, we uh, will have enabled the production uh, of a commercial scale of fuel ethanol based on corn residues in the United States at a price which is in the United States competitive uh, with that uh, of corn based. I know that here you produce much cheaper, so here the, uh, you can say the challenge uh, is bigger uh, uh, than uh, that in the United States. But uh, it, we, we uh, will have enabled the technology next year, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the uh, gentleman from Poet could not uh, appear here, but he would have said that uh, they uh, will have their first large-scale operation up and running in uh, 2011, at a, uh, and it will be producing at a scale of around 100 uh, million liters uh, per year. In China, where we work with uh, Sinopec and, uh, and Kafco together in a tri-party collaboration, these are the data from, from China. Uh, we are uh, next year at uh, 250, and uh, we uh, know what to do to bring us to 150 in 2015, which uh, in China actually the production uh, price uh, or the, the, the price when, uh, for the refiners is uh, $2 per, per gallon. So we would be uh, in business uh, 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 already somewhere between 2010 and 15 in China. In uh, Brazil, uh, the, uh, uh, you can say a road towards uh, cellulose could look like this. Uh, we are in lab scale, uh, uh, we were in lab scale uh, up till last year. We are now in, uh, soon in, in pilot scale. Uh, the uh, CTC pilot uh, will soon be uh, ready. There's a small one now, but a, a kind of continuous one will be ready. Then uh, a demonstration scale, we believe, could be ready 10 to 12. Uh, and uh, then hopefully commercial scale could commence uh, uh, in 12 or a little later. So uh, this is, uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, I'm, this is already my summary slide, so I'm okay. Uh, so uh, um, this is my summary slide, but I've just been instructed that I have five more minutes. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll use the five minutes to uh, kind of compare uh, uh, the uh, situation in China, uh, the situation in, um, in, in uh, the US with that of Brazil. 
uh, the, uh, when, you, you, when we make the total calculations for China, one of the advantages, two advantages for China, one is that they have, um, uh, it's very cheap for them to collect the biomass. Of course, uh, the gas is even cheaper because it's already collected. But relative to the US, it's uh, much cheaper to collect in China because of the low labor cost in rural areas. So that's one good thing for them. Another is that uh, investment cost in, uh, in, in China is uh, between, um, it's only like 40% of that in the, in the United States to build to the same specifications. So they can build to the same specifications at only 40% of cost, which of course changes the picture uh, to their advantage. In the US, uh, the uh, advantage for the producers there is the massive government support. There's a subsidy element for cellulosic of 101 cents. There's the mandate, and uh, soon there'll be uh, government uh, uh, loan guarantees as it looks. So, of course, a lot of uh, government support is, uh, is playing uh, to uh, their advantage. In Brazil, of course, the, the big advantage is that the, the, the gas is already uh, in the factories. You have the whole infrastructure, you know what to do. This is your home turf uh, to make uh, bioethanol and export it. So uh, that's, I, as I see it, uh, the big, uh, you can say, advantages that Brazil have uh, for, to develop uh, cellulosic um, in this competition between the US and China. And uh, let me conclude by saying that uh, we are very happy to work here. We have excellent collaboration with the CTC, and nothing would please us more than seeing this fly in uh, Brazil. Thank you. Pessoal, quem quiser fazer perguntas por escrito, por favor, faça anotação no papel e levante a mão que as nossas assistentes vão pegar a, a pergunta, não esquecendo de dizer quem está perguntando, a empresa que representa, a entidade, e, obviamente, endereçando a pergunta para o Steam. Uh, Steam, question for you. Uh, in uh, Europe, uh, there is this mandate to have uh, up to 20% of renewable energy in the continent metrics by 2020. Um, up to now, there were not very clear uh, rules regarding the milestones that the countries had to deliver between now and 2020. Uh, it seems like this is coming uh, in place now. Uh, how do you see the, let's say, the commitment or the enthusiast, enthusiasm of, of the European countries to move more strongly into ethanol uh, if these milestones are established and if the commitment uh, from other nations like you know, Brazil and the US uh, seem that are coming to fruition uh, with these results that you are presenting, okay? Yeah, uh, just thank you. Let me just uh, ask the same, same question in Portuguese for them, okay? A pergunta que eu fiz okay. para eles, para quem não tem o, o, o microfone, uh, os fones de ouvido, é que na Europa tem agora um mandato que em 2020 uh, nós vamos ter que ter 20% de fontes renováveis de energia na matriz, né? Essas fontes renováveis podem ser de qualquer natureza, pode ser eólica, solar e, e também biocombustíveis. Mas não havia até recentemente uh, métricas ou, ou mensurações graduais para esses países. Né? Eu estou perguntando para o Stim se o estabelecimento dessas métricas vai realmente fortalecer um compromisso de, desses países em seguir uh, com a implantação do etanol na sua matriz e principalmente se em vendo que uh, a realidade nos Estados Unidos, em termos de custo e competitividade, e possivelmente no Brasil, vai fazer com que os europeus também se também movam mais rapidamente nessa direção. Obrigado. Uh, é um, uh, it, it correto que quando o uh, uh, target for, uh, bio, uh, uh, for, for 